Okay, so we know after lunch, it's a little hard sometimes to kind of just reorient yourself and get back to a place where you're ready to hear and learn some more, um, especially when you got nice full bellies. Um, so we just wanted to start this session just kind of recapping what we've covered um, so far and then talk about how we're going to kind of finish this last session out. So we talked about what is doctrine of God, why it matters, and we dove into some of God's incommunicable attributes. Like we said, um, definitely that was not exhaustive. There is so much more we could take. Um, that book, None Like Him, whoever won that, lucky you, is a really great book. Um, also the Tozer book and the Knowing God book, we've pulled a lot of what we're talking about today from those books and from those um, authors. And so those will be a good um, resource to, to be able to dive into a little bit more. Um, we're gonna start with another chance for you guys to just kind of re, um, refocus by turning to a neighbor and talking about in this season that you're in right now, in this season coming you know, through this pandemic, through all of these changes in chaos, what, what has God been teaching you about himself? You can look at that list of attributes um, if you kind of need a reference point. But if you were to say, hey, God is teaching me um, and not just teaching me patience or something like that about yourself, but let's think about what is he teaching us about himself. So he's teaching me that he never changes, so on and so forth. So what has he been teaching you in this season? All right, so I hope one of the things you notice from talking to other people is that the Lord is teaching us um, sometimes similar things, but also sometimes different things about his character, right? Depending on what you're kind of walking through, the Lord may be teaching you um, something different than he's teaching your neighbor. And what a beautiful thing that is, that he is so um, just majestic and perfect in all these different attributes that he can, the same God can be revealing something totally different, um, but still true of who he is to someone else. So I think that's just a, a nice like a good place to kind of start in, in remembering that he is working all things for our good and his glory. And that's going to look a little bit different for each of us. Um, and not to compare and say, oh, I want him to teach me that. But instead, just right. like be able to say, this is beautiful, Lord. Thank you for teaching me this. So we're going to shift now from um, so talking about incommunicable attributes, which are things that are only true of God that we um, tend to try to rival him in. And instead, now we're going to shift to communicable attributes. So what are communicable attributes? So sometimes these are called God's moral attributes, and it's those that we can also have to some degree. And I think it's important to remember that, like Aaron said earlier, like God is infinite and we are finite beings, so we will never possess these in the same way that God does. Mm -hmm. um, but we can reflect these to others. Like we've been talking about, you know, reflecting his attributes. These are ones that we definitely can reflect and, to, and show to some extent. Mm -hmm. So when we were thinking about this, there's, there's so many different directions we could have gone with this, talking about his justice, his mercy, his goodness, his, um, there's so many, his wisdom, all these different things that we could have talked about, but we decided to just pick kind of one focus that we think infiltrates the rest of them, and that's um, holiness. Holiness, um, why don't you give a quick definition of holiness? Yeah, so it's defined as being set apart, sacred, separate, of possessing utter purity of character. And holiness, I feel like, is kind of hard to wrap your mind around sometimes. It's kind of this word that if you've been in the church for long, you've heard a lot. But like when someone says, well, what is holiness? It's like hard to define. And so I recently heard that the verb form of holiness is sanctify, to sanctify. And I feel like that's something that we understand a little bit better. That's to look more like Jesus, to strive mm -hmm. to live our life more like Jesus. So if mm -hmm. we think of holiness in the same way, just looking at Jesus, like Jesus embodies holiness, I feel like that's a little bit easier way to understand it. Yeah, I think that's really helpful too, thinking of, okay, if, if this is a way we can grow to be like God, um, what does that look like? And so it looks like sanctification, right? Sanctification is being transformed one degree of glory to the next, Corinthians tells us. Um, and so that that's what it looks like in our lives. And the reason we decided to focus on this one um, in Tozer's book, he talks about how all of the other 
attributes fall under holiness. Um, he says, holy is the way God is. To be holy, he does not conform to a standard, but he is the standard. He is absolutely holy with an infinite, incomprehensible fullness of purity that is incapable of being anything other than it is. Because he is holy, all of his attributes are holy. That is, whatever we think of as belonging to God must be thought of as holy. And Casey talked about that when we think about his omniscience, his, all of those, that those are holy. And we have to think the same way when we think about his mercy is a holy mercy. And therefore, when we extend mercy, we want it to look like the way God extends mercy, not how we think humans have embodied mercy. So when we're thinking about these ways of how we can um, share in these attributes of God and how we can grow in these in our lives, Life, we have to use God as the standard and the definition of what these things are. We can look around and we can say, that's a good thing, but is it good in the terms of what God has called good, right. not in what man has called good? Is this what mercy looks like? Is this what justice looks like in how God has defined these things, not in how society or our parents or our friends have, have defined these things? So this is a place where we can really be very reflective and just be aware and ask the Spirit to kind of just illuminate ways how we have put our own definitions to these attributes. Like you said, with, with holiness, but with any of these attributes, we come with some sort of baggage, if you will, when we think, like, we can both be talking about the same thing. We can both be talking about justice, which is a, a big word right now in culture, right? But we can mean two entirely different things. Same with mercy, same with love, love same yeah. with, there's so many different examples that we could talk about here where we, we, we're speaking the same language, but we have two completely different meanings. And so what we want to do and what we want to encourage you guys to do is as you continue to dive into these different attributes is to really allow scripture to define what these things are instead of letting us define what they are or society define what they are. So as we talk about holiness, I want you to be thinking about how that holiness um, defines the other attributes. Does that make sense? It's kind of the lens we're going to look through as we're thinking of all of these attributes and the way that we are to grow in these attributes. We can't grow in mercy apart from growing in holiness because our mercy then is going to not be the right type of mercy that we're supposed to grow in or the right type of justice or the right type of wisdom, right? There is worldly wisdom. Mm -hmm. There is worldly justice. There is all of these things outside um, defined by something else. And our heart... Um, is for us to really understand what those things are as God defines them and then to live and grow in those things the way that God has designed for us to do that. So um, let's look at some scripture. Yeah, so if you had asked me a while ago, well, is holiness, is that communicable or is that incommunicable? I probably would have said incommunicable because I was that I, I can't be holy, only God's holy. But that's not true because we're covered by the blood of Jesus, we, we can be holy. And scripture actually says that. It says in 1 Peter 1, 14 through 16, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just something important to remember. Like the Bible tells us that we can, and like I said, it's not gonna be a perfect holiness like God's, but that is something that we can strive for. And this week, as I was just thinking about like holiness and how all of these other attributes kind of fall under this umbrella. I, I went back to my youth group days and I remembered this song that uh, Mercy Me used to sing called Take My Life. Does anybody else remember that song? Sing it, then they'll remember. I'm not gonna <laughs> sing it, but I will, I will tell you the lyrics. So the lyrics are, holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. Take my life, inform it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. And I love that because I'm like singing this in my head. And then I realize that not only is it talking about this holiness that we should be longing for, but it takes us right back to what we talked about at the beginning of the day with Romans 12, 2, which says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. 
So this song, like this one like verse and chorus of this song, like kind of encompassed a lot of what we wanted to talk about today, about longing for this holiness of God and letting our minds and our hearts kind of be in unity to be transformed into who God wants us to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's, that's a really good way to think about it. If we look, um, if we're thinking about other places in scripture where we see this, I come back to the story of Isaiah. Um, in Isaiah, he says, woe to me, I'm a man of unclean lips. And, and the reason he says that is because he's looking at the holiness of God. And so when we look to the standard, we look to the perfection, we look to, um, like Casey's saying, the ultimate perfection of holiness, it should create in us a realization that, wow, like, I am a sinner, that I am a man of unclean lips. And this is something we don't often talk about, especially as um, like a, a women's event. Like nobody thinks I'm gonna come and like have to talk about repentance and sin. We wanna come and talk about the fun things. But it's important for us to recognize that when we are looking at um, who God is, a natural and right response is repentance and is a realization of our need and our lack. And so if that's something that you're feeling, like you're in good company, that was Isaiah's exact response as well. And it's what do we do with that then? What do we do with that realization of, okay, um, you are holy and you are righteous and I see the sin in my heart and then, okay, what do I do? I can fall into shame and guilt or I can bring this to the feet of Jesus and know that Jesus has already paid for the, this for the cost of my sin. And I think when we um, when we look at Isaiah, we have this this beautiful picture of what it looks like to have that um, recognition, and then we can say, okay, w- what am I going to do with that? And what we can what we get to do, what we get the um, privilege of doing is giving that back to to Jesus, saying, you know what, you already paid for this, you knew this was going to happen, you're not taken by surprise, Mm -hmm. and that he longs for us to grow in holiness. And part of that is is that recognition of that this is something we need to grow in. If we think already, oh, I'm already holy, then we won't think we need to grow in that. And one thing that I want to make sure we understand is that when we're talking about this holiness, there's kind of two aspects of it. There is a um, positional holiness and a a practical holiness is one way you can think about it. So we are instantly, um, the moment we put our faith and trust in Jesus, the moment we accept the gospel, we are positionally made holy. We are positionally, like Casey said, we are seen by God as covered by the blood of Jesus. And so he sees us as perfect and clean and holy. So there's that aspect of it, right? That happens um, in justification you're instantly saved, you're instantly seen as holy. And then there's this continual walking where we talked about sanctification, right? Where we're being transformed. And this is where this like practical holiness grows. We're instantly seen as holy by God, by the work of Jesus, but then we grow in that holiness for the rest of our lives, growing to look look more like him, ultimately so that people can see what... um, what the work of Christ does in our lives. So I just want to make sure we we under, we grasp that idea that we um, are instantly seen as holy by by God, but then we continue to grow in holiness. And there's a, there's a tension here, right? Like, what does that actually mean? What does that actually look like in our lives? And it's going to look a little different for each of us as we're on our own journeys with God. But I just want you to like rest at ease and know that as soon as your faith in, is in in Jesus Christ, you are seen as holy and you are imputed with. Christ's righteousness. Um, So I don't want it to feel burdensome or legalistic. Uh, I don't want it to feel like, okay, so I don't have to try to be omnipotent or omniscient, but I do have to try to be holy because then it can kind of feel like, oh man, this is a lot of work. What am I going to do? How is this going to happen? And there's such a beautiful truth here that I don't want us to miss. Um, We're studying through James on our podcast, and this has been a, a theme we've been seeing through James as well, is that Whatever we behold or whatever we keep our eyes on, we're going to become. A, a, a tree that is growing doesn't have to try to make apples. If it's an apple tree, it's going to produce apples. Okay? It's not like, oh, I got to go try and work hard today to grow an apple. And so this is the same truth that carries over for us in holiness. It's not a perfect journey, right? We all know that as we're walking out our faith, we know that we can, you know, be on fire for God and then we sin and then we have, and there's a lot of tension and a lot of moving parts here. But I just want you to to recognize that the more you keep your eyes on Christ, the more you stay in community, the more you spend 
time in God's word, the more beautiful God is to you, which he becomes more beautiful the more you know him, that this is going to be a natural um, just byproduct of that. You're going to grow in holiness because you're keeping your eyes on who God is. And so I hope that you hear us in saying that this, this is not some box you have to check in saying, okay, this is a communicable attribute. I can be like God in this way. I better go do X, Y, and Z. Now, spiritual disciplines are a gift and a good thing. So don't take this the opposite way and say, I don't have to do anything. It's just gonna happen naturally. I'm covered by grace. All of that is true. But I want you to, to find a place where you feel, okay, I love the Lord. I want to know him more. And as I know him more, I am going to grow in this holiness. Is that fair, you think? Yeah, and I love your apple tree analogy. I mean, I can take it back to my cantaloupe too, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. like I told you, I've learned so much about God through gardening, but the reason my cantaloupe plant is producing cantaloupe is because it's healthy. It mm -hmm. has healthy roots. It has the mm -hmm. right nutrients. So the fruit is like the overflow of the health. And so that's exactly what Aaron's saying, like this holiness and the sanctification, like this is the overflow of us like spending time in God's word and knowing more of who he is. Mm -hmm. It should not be burdensome or um, like you feel like you're having to labor to do it. It's an overflow. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we're gonna pause here for a moment and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little activity. This is gonna be something that you guys may be really comfortable with and some of you have maybe done never done this before, but one of our hearts when we're talking about like what does it look like for us to grow in this is oftentimes like spending time in God's word. So what does it look like for us to spend time in God's word in a way that is God-focused instead of self-focused? So we're gonna spend some time, um, a good bit of time, yeah. looking at some different passages. I will give you some as options, but you are welcome to use different passages if you like. And we're going to have you look at that passage and tell us which attributes you find in that passage. Um, I used to be a teacher, so this is when the teacher in me really comes out because I really like activities like this and stuff like hands-on, practical. But our heart behind this is like I said at the beginning, we're our, a lot of us were raised in a way to open your Bible and say, okay, give me my answer. Apply this to me. What does this mean for me? And to be 100% honest, we were talking about this at lunch. I think the biggest change in my walk with the Lord has come when I understood to read scripture looking for God first. And so we're gonna practice that. If so, this is something you're really comfortable with, awesome. It'll be a great refresher for you. If this is something you haven't done before, just be honest with that and, and struggle through it. It might not feel natural at first, um, but you're gonna have some time and you're just gonna read through a passage and we're gonna look, okay, what do we see about God in this passage? What is this, which attributes that maybe we've talked about today or haven't, you can look at your list on your thing. What am I seeing about God? What is this teaching me about his character? Um, and, and then we'll have a chance for you guys, you guys can talk about it at your tables. Do you guys have any questions about how that'll work? Okay, so I'm gonna just list some different passages off if you want to use these. Like I said, you can use different ones if you want, but I, I don't want you to just pick a passage that only talks about God. I want you to get stretched a little bit here on ones that seem like they're only about us or about random things and try to fit, find God in those passages. So um, first one, we're just gonna go start in the Old Testament here. Genesis 32, um, 22 to 32, 2 Samuel 7. 1 through 17, Psalms. Slow down you can a little bit. Slow, slow down. Bit. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Genesis 32. Oh, thanks. You're awesome, Ramona. Okay. I'll say, I'll start over just to be helpful. Genesis 32, verses 22 through 32. 2 Samuel 7, 1 through 17. And if I give you verses, you are welcome to start before or go farther. Like, especially if you're like, I want to know how this started. Um, Psalms 96, really you could do any of the Psalms. You could really do any passage, but. Yeah. Um, John 11, John 17, Romans 8, any of it, but all of it. Any of it, but all of it. <laughs> um, Colossians 1, <laughs> one passage that I've just been si sitting in um, lately is 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9. So that's another good one. Um, those are just some examples for you, but feel free to do as many as you'd like. If you get through one, um, maybe do another one or do a different one than the person sitting next to you and then kind of discuss. Um, we'll give you probably like 15 minutes to work on this. So do as many as you'd like.
Awesome. Okay. Do you want to describe what we're going to do next? You want me to? Oh, I can do it. Okay. So just, we're going to spend, uh, we're doing the prayer next, right? Yeah. Okay. We're um, going to listen to some music. And I know right now, especially um, life can seem kind of loud and noisy and crazy. And we just wanted to give you a little bit of time to just spend with the Lord and asking Him to reveal to you um, where He's helping you grow specifically in holiness right now. And just spend some time um, thanking Him for who He is and um, for what you've learned today and how He's going to continue to teach you about Himself. And just um, honestly, if if you just want to spend this time just like resting and just meditating on his his goodness and um that's good too that's one thing that we've talked about before we're not very good at like just being still and quiet and resting um and so we wanted to give you a chance to do that so we're going to listen to some music and then we'll um come back afterwards to wrap up this session mm-hmm. 